Cranmore nestled in the valley of the mad and noisy river, who first settled in this bucolic location. The Huron Indians were here first, of course, but who were the first Europeans? Edward Webster was the founder of Cremor in 1845. But is this the complete story? Every school child learns that Christopher Columbus discovered America, and stories of the Vikings reaching North America were dismissed as myths until the discovery and excavation of lawns or meadows in Newfoundland proved it to be a fact beyond dispute. Also dismissed as myth is the story of St. Brendan, the navigator, who in the 6th century, along with a company of monks, took an eight-year voyage across the Atlantic. Did he reach North America? In 1976, adventurer Timothy Severn, using a similar boat, proved it could be done. Petroglyphs dated from 500 to 1000 AD, found in West Virginia, are said by some scholars to be written in Ogam, an old Irish alphabet. Stone structures found in New England are said by some to resemble the construction techniques of the early Celtic people. Are there other clues? Let us examine the evidence. Thousands of years ago, before the last ice age, the valley that now has the Mad River gently flowing through it would have contained a mighty river that, over the ages, deposited millions of tons of river rock wherever it flowed. The evidence of these deposits are visible today at the bottom of this old riverbed. Farmers have to put up with this rock deposit. Home gardeners aren't quite so lucky. Here is one gardener's solution to the problem of the rocks in the soil. This looks very intriguing. There is something here that needs to be uncovered. Oh! What is this? This appears to be a Celtic cross. This bears further exploration, but it is going to require something more robust than a shovel. And after much excavation, what has been uncovered? numerous instances of what appear to be Christian cross symbols. And steps leading down onto a stone-like floor. What do we make of these discoveries? We know that the Jesuits set up a settlement in the 17th century near Midland to preach the gospel to the Native Americans. Is it possible that St. Brendan and his company of monks had done something similar over a thousand years before that in Cremor? Could it be that what is today used as a pleasant garden retreat was originally the foundation of a church built by St. Brendan? Is this the remains of a primitive baptismal font? Were these alcoves used for altars? This looks to be a very old whiskey bottle. The monastery at Clonfort was founded by St. Brendan. This iron cross has been buried a very long time. The evidence is certainly intriguing. Could St. Brendan have been the first European to visit and settle in what is now Cremor? We present the facts. You decide.